Photoshop has the ability to work with data, which would allow you to swap in an individual picture with a team picture and make sort of a memory mate. You design it once, and then using the names of the different layers, you can connect that to a CSV file and the columns that are in that, and it will combine the images and text from the CSV into a single template and keep saving that. You can export them as a bunch of PSDs. So in this example, I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna do a memory mate that's gonna have an individual picture and then a team picture. And you can see I have two different team pictures and a handful of individuals. The names and faces have been changed to protect the innocent. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna start from scratch. It's gonna be a very simple memory mate template. And let's see, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a shape over here, a rounded rectangle. This is gonna be the individual picture. Next thing I'm gonna do is draw another one that's for the team picture. And one thing when you're doing this, that since Photoshop is gonna combine the images into the different nodes and put the text where it's supposed to be, you don't get a chance to crop them. So the size of these different nodes where I'm gonna put the image, it's kind of important that your images are cropped in advance so that they fit right there. This one here, that's gonna be the team picture. I know it's a five by seven. So in this properties over here, I'm gonna go over and change the width. This is gonna be seven inches. And the height is gonna be five inches. And that should take care of that. And then I'm just gonna position it by looking at it. Uh, I'm probably gonna do the same thing on this one. I think this should be a two and a half by three and a half. So I'm gonna say 2.5, 3.5. Oops. And that's a little better. I also kind of want the, let's go ahead and make the corners a little bit rounded. I also want the corners to be a little bit more rounded just to make it more obvious that that's what this is. Uh, since they're locked, all four corners changed at once. I'll go back, do the same thing to this one. And let's see, I'm gonna do a couple of lines of text. So here's gonna be the team name. On another layer is gonna be the individual name. I'm just gonna call that name. And these are just placeholders. Down here, I'm just gonna type in some static text, like this could be the name of the league. And we'll change the font to be a little smaller on that one. Uh, we'll make the font for the team a little bigger. And now I'll select all three of them. So I selected the three layers here and then the move tool. And then I'm just gonna go up here and align them and then move them where I think they should be. And let's see, I'll move this line up. And now they're out of sync again. So then I also need to put in the images. I just made some shapes here. These are gonna be clipping masks. So now I'll drop in an image into here, actually. Let's see. So that's the team picture. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Right click here, I'm gonna do place in Photoshop. And it should have put it on top of the team picture. And now I'm gonna press Alt, and in between, you can see I get a little different icon there. That's to make it a clipping mask. So I brought it in as a smart object. It wants you to sort of resize it, which I do need to do. It's gonna be a little big, but I'm gonna do that once it's been clipped. So I'm gonna press Return, and then I press Alt over here. And now you can see it's been clipped to the shape behind it. Now I'm gonna press Control T. And since these were cropped pretty good, I shouldn't have to do too much. Yeah, we'll say it's like that. Now I'm gonna highlight the other rectangle, this one for the individual picture. I'm gonna go back up here, grab one of these, place in Photoshop. And again, it wants it's a smart object automatically comes in sort of in the transform mode, press return. Again, I'm gonna press alt. Now it's clipped. Control T again, so I can see what size I'm really making it. There you go. Uh, I'll put a layer style on here. Okay, so a couple other things we need to do when uh, the layer naming is very important. 
name, team. That one says Bulldogs. I'm going to change that to say team photo. And then this one's going to be the individual photo. And these are going to be what matches up to the CSV columns. So that's just a really rudimentary memory mate template. I'm going to go ahead and file. I'm going to go ahead and save that as a PSD, and I have a folder named PS Data Testing. I'm going to go ahead and save it in there. We'll call it Memory Mate PSD, and there we go. The CSV is going to be from here. I've got a Google spreadsheet, Google Docs spreadsheet open, and you can see I just have a couple of things: name, the team. That's the team name, the individual photo, that's the JPEG number, and the team photo, that's the file name for the team photo. And if you go back out to my folder, that's what corresponds to these files here, Argentina JPEG. Go back over here, Argentina JPEG, and that's the team Argentina. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and just export this as a CSV. And I'll go ahead and paste it into my folder. And um, yeah, so if you want to look at it in Notepad, CSV just means just comma separated values. There's a comma in between each set of values, which also means you can't use a comma in any of the data or else it's going to mess up the format. You could probably uh, do a tab delimited, although I'm not sure that was an option. I'm just going to call this soccer data. And now we're back to Photoshop. So with this PSD file open, we're going to go up to image variables and then define. And here it's going to pull in the layer names. So you can see in this drop down, I got all the different layer names. And then you're going to match them up to what it's called in the CSV file. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll do name. And since name is a text layer, it knows that. And it's giving you a couple choices text replacement, visibility. What you want to do is text replace it with name from the CSV. And then we go ahead and click there. I'll go to the next one team, text replacement team team photo aha and this is where I had a problem when I did this as a run through is that over here it's a smart object so it's not recognized I'm just going to press OK over here and we go back up here and rasterize this it's doing that to the two photos since I brought them in as place in Photoshop from bridge they're automatically smart objects they need to be rasterized first now I'm going to save this again and we'll go back up to image and variables and define. So team photo, now that it's a, an actual image, I can do pixel replacement. And again, I'm naming this the same as what's in my CSV file. Here you have a couple of different methods on what to do. I've just been doing fit. I haven't checked all the other op options to see what they do. But since my images are more or less cropped to the size they need to be, I don't, I'm not expecting there to be much trouble. And we'll go to the next one. I'm not changing the clipping mass. Individual photo I am. And let's go see what I called this. Individual photo. And we'll go to the next one. Another clipping mass. Layer 0 is the background. That's the league name. I'm not changing that. So we're changing the name, changing the team, changing the team photo and we're changing the individual photo. And now from here, I should be able to go to data sets. And from here, I'm going to import the CSV that we have. Click on select files. And it's not going to see it because it's looking for a text file. It's really a CSV. So there's the CSV. Click load. And then encoding automatic. Not sure what that is. Shouldn't be any problem. Use first column for data set names. That's correct. And replace existing data sets. That's in case you had this open already and had some existing data. Click OK. And now you can see in the data set, it's choosing the first one, Sally Smith, and sort of showing you what it's going to do. And you can sort of tab through these and see that the values in here change. And so that's it for setting it up. Now the way you do this to all of them, I think there I just changed one of them. So the way you change all of them is go up to File, Export, Data Sets as Files. 
So here it gives you a choice, all data sets, or you can just do one person. Yes, I want to do all of them. Document names, got some different things that you can do to do the file naming. We'll just go ahead and give it the document name that it had, which is memory mate underscore, and then the data set name. So it's going to be memory mate Sally Smith .ps with a one. I'm doing a data set number sequence at the end. And then down here, it's going to be a, a PSD. That's, that's the one thing I don't like about this, is that it's always saving it as a PSD. So after this, I'm going to have to go convert them to JPEGs, but that's not a big deal. And then you have to choose the folder where you want them to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the same place as my other stuff. Inside of a new folder there, we'll call it memory mates. Click OK. So now that I have the folder set, I can click OK, and it's just going to go and export them. And there you can see they're practically already done. And let's see, I think that's all of them. Eight. One, two, three, four. Yep, eight. And if we zoom in a little bit in bridge, you can see Argentina, Bulldogs, Bulldogs, Argentina, Argentina. That's the team name at the top, the kid's name, and then the league, which was just static text. And it's changed out all the pictures. The kid's name matches the pictures. And then from here, like I said, they're PSDs, so I'll just go ahead and select all of them. Go back up to Tools, Photoshop, Image Processor, and save as a JPEG level 10. Convert to sRGB, and uncheck that. Click Run, and I should end up with another subfolder, and inside of that's going to be all the JPEGs. And there you go. So that was sort of a medium example of what you could do. Sometimes it's just that you want to put the name on the bottom of a picture or something like that, or the file name someplace. This has got two different text fields and then two different image fields. One thing I'd like to be able to do that I don't think you can is to control the color of something. So I'd like to have a layer here. And I guess I could do that. You could do that. The background could be a separate file. That's interesting. I kind of like that idea. The background could be a separate file that would match something in the CSV. So you could say, you know, you could have a color, I guess, and then you could change the background based on that. That'd be kind of cool. But that's a pretty, pretty neat feature inside Photoshop. I didn't know that was there for a long time. I've used it a handful of times to make a variety of things. I made, uh, for a large soccer league, we did. I made bag labels like that by doing this in Photoshop with the data that we already had for the soccer league and it worked out quite handy. It's, if you don't have access to one of the more expensive uh, team photography packages like Photolinks or uh, one of the other ones, there is a lot you can do in Photoshop. The, the worst thing about it though is that you can't crop this picture as you're going through.